look at that uh, Matthew 5 3. It says that uh, Jesus went up on the hillside and began to teach. He sat down on a rock. Now this is this is Jesus Christ. This is the third person or the second person of the Trinity. This is this is Christ, our Lord and Savior. He came from his throne in heaven and he started teaching on a rock on a hillside. And I don't know if it was this windy or not, but you know, I'm sure he didn't mind the wind either because he created it. Of course, he could steal it too. Um, but as he started teaching, he said, Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Man, that poverty of spirit is really tough. And it took me a long time to really understand what that was. You know, I, I teach an anger management class, and, and we talk about the causes of anger, and one of the biggest causes of anger is frustration. I'm just not getting my way. And that's, that's what that born spirit means. We're just not going to get our way. It's, we got to have God's way. we got to want what God wants. So poverty of our own spirit. But when we have poverty of our own spirit, when we're poor in our own spirit, then he says, well, blessed are those who grieve or mourn. For they will be comforted. Well, what am I mourning? Well, I'm mourning getting my own way. I'm mourning the things that I can't do so I can celebrate the things I can do in Christ. Then the next one really kind of gets me. Blessed are the meek. Now when I say meek, what do you think about? Most people think about mealy mouth, milk toast, groveling, you know, can walk under the door jam of a closed door with their head held high. That's not meek. That's not what Christ was talking about. I love what Tony Evans uses as an example for meekness. Put him out on the hillside, and what do you see in this guy? You see strength, you see spirit, you see uh, freedom, you see all sorts of stuff. You take that stallion and you appropriately train him, get him on the saddle. Has he lost any of his strength? No. Has he lost any of his spirit? Absolutely not. It's just spirit under control. And so, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That is starting to think about, okay, God, what do you really want me to do? the last one, or the fourth one there, are blessed are those who hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. After Christ, I think in Mark it, it says, after Christ fed the 4,000, they went over to the other side of the lake, and um, the disciples were, were talking about feeding people again and doing this, and he says, don't you understand, the food that I have I give you, you'll never be hungry again drink that I have to give you, you'll never be thirsty again. The woman at the well, he was out there ministering to her, asked for something to drink, and he says, the water I give you will satisfy your thirst. So blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness sake, and it's the only place that I can find in Scripture that will be satiated, that will be filled. So today I want to use Willow. We're going to do an a example of join up. Now when Willow was first born, poor thing, I was the first thing he saw. In fact, it was February 27th, I think, in 2000, up in Taos, New Mexico. It was on a Sunday afternoon in February, and usually you, you expect a Sunday afternoon in February is going to be kind of cold. It was a bright sunshine. In fact, I think it was warmer than it is here today. Didn't have as much wind either. The first thing this poor boy saw was me. It was such a blessing. Such a blessing to see this, this little stud coat born. Well, we, we started raising him, and this is Cynthia's horse. And if you know Cynthia an animal, she likes to spoil animals, including me. And then, uh, yes, little? Yeah, we're talking about you. Um, and so, we got him here, down here to Oklahoma, and and I started wanting to train him, but I just couldn't do it. I mean, he was too spoiled, too rotten, and too strong for me really to mess with, so I wouldn't really mess with him. Well, since then, you can see that I'm not too afraid of him. He's not too afraid of me. But right now, he's, he's right and standing right here with me. But if, we want, if I wanted him to be really be my partner, and go 
my way. He'd probably go his own way. But, yeah. Don't you love Cowboy Church? <laughs> Only in Cowboy Church would you have this. So Willow and I are going to work a little bit here. And uh, you're going to see him go through four phases. The first phase, as I start running him, as he do his job to get ready for this, is kind of like uh, him coming to grips with being poor in spirit. He's going to start running around looking at you saying, hey, there's a, there's a big old predator in the middle of this ring with a stick. He's going to beat me and eat me. And so he's going to, then he's going to start getting me his ear, listening to me. Well, what does he really want? Then he's going to start coming a little bit closer to me. He's going to come off the edge a little bit. Start trusting me a little bit. The third thing he's going to do in the meekness with Christ yet, or he doesn't have it with us. So let's see what Willow does.